All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back to another networking slash math video. This time we're going to be talking about how to convert between those number systems that we talked about last time. Okay, so when we talk about changing systems, you can do a very arduous sort of process, uh, which I'll show you first, and then you can try another way, make it a two-step process, where sometimes it's easier to convert to some intermediary system and then convert to the final destination. And I, again, I'll show you how that works in a second. But let's do it the hard way first. Let's say that we have a number uh, 5,434 in base 10. So we know that that's an Arabic number. We know that the, each digit can be in a range from 0 to 9. So to convert this to octal, we would first have to figure out what powers of 8 were necessary. And so you sort of have to know, all right, what's, what's 8 to the first, you know, what's 8 squared, what's 8 to the third, what's 8 to the fourth, and so on. And do we need those numbers? So in this particular case, we find out that 8 to the fourth power is 4096. And so what you would do is you say, well, does 4096 go into our number? And if it does, we would see how many times it goes in there, in this case once, and then we would get a remainder, 1,338. And then we would say, all right, does the next power of 8 down go into this one? Well, 8 to the third is 512. And so 512 does go into 1,338. How many times? It goes in twice. And then what's the remainder? 314, 64 is next. How many times does that go in? four times what's the remainder and then we say well now let's divide it by eight or eight to the first and then we say how many times and then what's the remainder and that's how we wind up with the octal number of one two four seven two all right now if we were going to convert to hexadecimal we would sort of do the same thing but with powers of 16. So 16 to the 0, 16 to the 1st, 16 squared, 16 to the 3rd. And we find out that the value, some of the values are the same, but some of them are different. So in this case, again, we start off dividing by 4096. We find out that it does go in there one time. And then we wind up with the next factor, or the next uh, power of 16, which is 16 squared, 256. And we find out that that goes into the remainder five times. And what are we left with? Well, that looks kind of similar, 58, but now we're dividing by 16, not 8. And so that goes in there three times. What's the remainder? 10. And then, oh, wait a minute. What is 10 in hexadecimal? Oh, that's the letter A. And so the hexadecimal conversion is 153A. But did you notice a couple of things? First of all, some values have a lot of similarity, right? We, in both cases, we started off with 4,096. So not only are the, is that a power of 2, but it's a power of 8 and a power of 16. Well, that shouldn't be too strange because we're starting to deal with factors of each other. Now, they're not always the same, right? Clearly, there's a difference between 8 squared and 16 squared. There's also something special about using these particular number systems. When you have octal and you've got the numbers 0 to 7 only, that's eight possible values. So base eight numbers can be represented with three binary digits each. When you're dealing with a hexadecimal value, a hexadecimal value has 16 possible values for each digit. Turns out that I can use four bits to represent each hexadecimal value. So that we're going to Note that, put that aside for a sec. When I was mentioning earlier, there's the hard way to do it, which is memorizing all those powers and everything else. Or if we just remember that there's one number system that sort of all of these share, or all of these can easily be converted to, and that's power of two, maybe if we converted to power of two first and then got onto our final destination, whatever it was, maybe that might make life a little easier. And so it turns out the powers of 2 are pretty easy to remember because you're just doubling all the time, right? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on. So if we remember that, that might actually make our conversion easier. And then we'll see a little magic here in a second, too. So let's go back to our number. Now, this is going to look really long uh, because we've got a lot more powers of 2 to go through. Right, so when we, when we deconstruct 5,434 in base 10 numbers to a base 2 number, 
what we find out is we've got to use a lot more exponents. Okay, so we do that, and you can see again that we start off with, you know, whatever the value is, and then we're going to see if the factor goes in there, or the power of 2 goes in there, and then we'll wind up with a remainder. Well, initially, that power of, of 2 is way too big for this particular problem, and so we don't need it. So I didn't bother to fill in the remainders here uh, until the last one. So that's what you would be doing, right? We would be following the same process, and we can see that there are when we're doing the subtraction, there are some values of binary or some powers of 2 that we don't actually need for this particular problem. Again, we keep going. We find out that there's no value in the, in the first one. We'll do the same thing, 5,434. Does 4,096 go in there? It does. What's the remainder? It turns out with the remainder of 1,338, we don't skip all the way down like we did in the other number systems. We have another power of 2 that comes first, but 2,048 is too big, and so we skip that one and we just keep working our way down in the exact same way that we did before and we find out that we wind up with a binary number that's all spread out there in the third step. So taking a look at the final results we can see the binary number indicated. What do we do now? Well, Let's say that I was trying to convert this to octal or to, to hexadecimal. How would I do it? Well if I was going to convert it to octal then what I would do knowing that I can use three binary uh, values to represent one octal digit, what if I just separated these out into chunks of three? And I spread them out like that, and then I go, okay, now let's convert each one of those groups of three to a base 10 number from its binary. So the very first one, 001, is just simply one, right? We know that if you have that binary number, that's what it equals. The second one is two, uh, then we got 100, which is four, 111, which is 7, and 010, which is 2. By the way, when you break it up into your groups and you wind up with orphans on the end, right, where you have one or two bits by themselves, you have to fill out the front leading zeros. So that's what I did in that very, very first octal digit. Well, that's pretty cool, huh? I think it's pretty cool. Let's see what happens with hexadecimal. Well, remember that we had this. Uh, this final result for our binary calculation. But now, because the hexadecimal values have 16 possible characters, let's break it up into four bits because we can represent 0 to 15 in a binary set of four digits. So we do it in the exact same way, fill in the leading zeros where we need to, and now convert them to their base 10 equivalent. Uh, when we have 0, 0, 0, 1, we know that that's a 1. Uh, when we have a 0, 1, 0, 1, that's a 5. 0, 0, 1, 1, that's a 3. Uh, this last one's kind of tricky. Well, that would be 10 in uh, base 10, but we know that we're talking about hexadecimal values, so that's actually the letter A. Awesome! Terrific! We can also rearrange the bits by groups of 8, and that gives us our bytes. And when we start to do that, we get an indication of just how much space a number might take up. So if I said I've got this hexadecimal number, how much memory space might it take up? Well, I need a certain number of bits to represent that, a certain number of bytes, and that's the space that it would take up. By the way, the range of values in one byte in base 10 numbers would be 0 to 255. That would be 8 binary digits of all zeros to 8 binary digits of all 1's. The same range of octal numbers with one byte of information is 000 to 377 and then for hexadecimal values would be 00 to FF. So that would be converted to binary again all zeros to two groups of four ones. Well how do I know if I'm doing this? If I'm a good student and I'm practicing and I'm really taking a whack at this well, there's lots of online calculators, but of course you have your handy built-in version there, which is exactly what I'm, I'm showing you here, this particular conversion. Using these techniques, you can go between any, any number system at all. So in my head, a lot of times what happens first is I go to binary and then I go to whatever the destination is. So a little bit of practice helps, but you'll get it. Um, you can always use your calculator to check things. 
Now, coming up, or the things that we got to at least be on the lookout for, is how do we represent negative numbers, right? We didn't talk about that at all. And how do we do operations? How do we add stuff together? We know how to do it in counting numbers, in Arabic numbers, but how does a computer do it? Well, that's something for another day, I suppose. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. May your number calculations always be correct and your packets always reach their destinations.